Queen Elizabeth I is considered one of the greatest queens ever to have ruled over England. During her time on the throne in the 16th century, and at the beginning of the 17th century, she would see off a huge number of threats to her reign. She would dispatch one of her biggest rivals, Mary Queen of Scots, ordering the execution of her cousin, who lost her head by the axe. Elizabeth, despite being very intelligent, could be cold and calculated, but she was also a ruthless monarch, who even in her final years, would order the execution of her once favourite, for possibly rebelling against her. Elizabeth would also deal with the Spanish Armada, the most feared naval fleet at the time, and she would become a glorious ruler, and she was incredibly popular with her population and subjects. But Elizabeth throughout her life liked to communicate beauty and power, but as 1603 came around, the Queen was rather sick, and she was a shadow of her former self. But following her death, her coffin would be broken into, and this would be disrupted inside of Westminster Abbey. Join us today to look at the opening of the coffin of Queen Elizabeth I, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. In the early hours of the 24th of March 1603, Queen Elizabeth I died. This marked the end of the Tudor era, and also the Elizabethan era, as a virgin queen had no children, and she would then be succeeded by the Scottish King, the son of the former monarch she executed, James VI of Scotland, who then became known as James I. But Elizabeth had been ill for some time, and for a number of months her health was failing and getting worse, as was the mental health of the Queen. She lived a remarkable age for a woman of the Tudor period, however in her final years of her life, she saw many of her friends succumb to their own deaths, and Elizabeth felt lonely and depressed, and she would at times appear vacant and deep in thought. It's believed during these episodes that she was contemplating whether she would make it to heaven or not, due to the executions she had ordered, but the Queen was going downhill. She was not a fighter anymore, and throughout her life she had fought off deadly diseases, such as smallpox, but the Queen was ready to die, and she was not willing to fight for her life anymore. Queen Elizabeth I was 69 years old when she died, and on her deathbed, the Archbishop of Canterbury promised that she would go to heaven, and he told her to consider and to think of God in her final moments, and that when she passed, she would rule again as a queen in the afterlife. But Elizabeth's throat swelled, and she became very depressed and down, and she did not fight to live any longer. Inside of her privy chambers and bedroom at Richmond Palace, Queen Elizabeth I did die, and she then left a number of key instructions to her servants about what should happen to her body following her death. She felt repulsed at the tradition of disembowelment and embalming, and with this she told her servants to specifically not allow doctors to cut her open, remove her heart and her insides, and then stuff the cavity with herbs and spices. This was done to stave off decay, and despite Elizabeth ordering for this not to happen to her, doctors regardless performed this horrific job going against the Queen's wishes. It would be a good job that they did do this, as allegedly the Queen's body would explode inside of the coffin due to a build-up of gases, and this also splintered the wood of the coffin, and would have been much more severe and worse if the Queen had not been embalmed in this manner. She was left to lay in state inside of a lead-lined coffin in Richmond Palace, and she was surrounded by burning tapers and other candles, before her journey to her final resting place would begin. The journey to take the Queen's body to Westminster Abbey did begin, and she was taken down the River Thames to the Palace of Whitehall, and her coffin was draped in black velvet, and it was watched at all times by six ladies. When it travelled by the royal barge, it was said, the oars at every stroke did tears let fall, due to the outpouring of grief across the nation in England. This is when it's alleged that the coffin would splintered with the explosion of her body, and it's believed that this explosion also disrupted the seer cloth that the Queen had been wrapped in, to best preserve her. However, on the 28th of April, a month after her death, Elizabeth I's remains were taken on a large procession to Westminster Abbey. It was said of this that, the city of Westminster was surcharged with a multitude of all sorts of people in their streets, houses, roofs and gutters that came to see the obsequies. There is such a general sighing, groaning and weeping, as the like has not been seen or known in the memory of man. The coffin was richly decorated, containing the Queen's regalia, and on top of this was an effigy of Elizabeth, and the waxen wood figure was wearing her Parliament robes, and her crown on her head, with the sceptre in her hand. 
This was for most people in London the first time they'd seen any image of their Queen, and the coffin was pulled by four horses, and was carried for the funeral service into Westminster Abbey. The Dean Andrews conducted the Queen's funeral, and then her coffin was carried into the Henry VII Lady Chapel. When this was built by Elizabeth's grandfather, it was hoped that it would become a huge Tudor mausoleum for the centuries to come. Initially, the body of Elizabeth was buried and placed in the same vault of that as her grandfather and grandmother, Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. This was done as a tribute to the Tudor Queen. However, in 1607, her coffin was moved to be in the same location as her half-sister, Queen Mary, also known as Bloody Mary. However, Elizabeth would be buried in the same vault as her Catholic half-sister, and she was actually buried on top of her, symbolising her significance over Mary. But it was said that 46 shillings and 4 pence was paid for the removal of the Queen's body to her new resting place, and this new place was actually a huge tomb, which cost James I almost £1,500. It showed Elizabeth on top, and the tomb was lifelike, and it shows Elizabeth in her final years looking grand and spectacular. But still today, Mary lies underneath Elizabeth in her coffin. But during the 19th century, the tomb of Queen Elizabeth I was broken into. In 1880, a book was published by Arthur Stanley, the Dean of Westminster Abbey, and he had been given special permission and access by Queen Victoria to access the royal vaults and the burials of the kings and queens. He was looking specifically for the coffin of King James I, Elizabeth I's successor, and he would break into the vaults and document what he saw, and these are the best descriptions we have of the coffins of the monarchs who ruled centuries ago. Stanley explored an aisle underground in the eastern end of the tomb of Elizabeth I and her monument, and he came across a small opening in the walls. When he crept through, he saw a narrow burial vault, with two coffins inside, and these were Elizabeth I and Mary I's coffins. Stanley went in closer for a look, and he then described the state of Elizabeth's coffin. He said, The excavations, however, had almost laid bare the wall immediately at the eastern end of the monument of Elizabeth, and through a small aperture a view was obtained into a low, narrow vault, immediately beneath her tomb. It was instantly evident that it enclosed two coffins, and two only, and it could not be doubted that these contained Elizabeth and her sister Mary. The upper one, larger and more distinctly shaped in the form of a body, like that of Mary Queen of Scots, rested on the other. There was no disorder or decay, except that the centering wood had fallen over the head of Elizabeth's coffin, and that the wooden case had crumbled away at the side, and had drawn away part of the vault of the decaying lid. No coffin plate could be discovered, but fortunately the dim light fell on the fragment of the lid, slightly carved. This led to a further search, and the original inscription was discovered. There was a Tudor badge, a full double rose, deeply but simply incised in the outline on the middle of the cover, on each side the august initials E.R., and below the memorable date 1603. The coffin lid had further been decorated with narrow moulded panelling. The coffin case was of inch elm, but the ornamental lid containing the inscription and panelling was of fine oak, half an inch thick, laid on the inch elm cover. The whole was covered with red silk velvet, of much which remained attached to the wood, and it had covered not only the sides and end, but also the ornamental oak cover, as though the bare wood had not been thought rich enough without the velvet. The sight of this secluded and narrow tomb, thus compressing in the closest grasp of the two Tudor sisters, partners of the same throne, and grave sleeping in the hope of resurrection, the solemn majesty of the great queen, thus reposing, as can hardly be doubted by her own desire, on her sister's coffin, was the more impressive from the contrast of its quiet calm, with the confused and multitudinous decay of the Stuart vault, and of the fullness of the tragic interest, with the vacancy of deserted spaces, which had been hitherto explored in other parts of the chapel. This vault was then immediately closed. Still to this day, this is the final time that anyone has cast eyes on the coffin of Queen Elizabeth I, and it is the truest account of the state that it was in. It was said that part of it may have been destroyed or damaged or decayed in the centuries following the death of the Tudor monarch, but her remains are still entombed above her half-sister to this day, and they are found under the large tomb of her. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, 
please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.